Ghost Rider is one of the most exciting early games for the NES. It takes the fast-paced sword-slashing action of Ninja Gaiden and combines it with the exploration-focused gameplay of something like Metroid. You'll travel the globe in search of new items or upgrades, while acrobatically platforming and slashing through enemies and bosses. The game was developed by Capcom, one of the premier developers for the NES. They were behind some of the biggest hits on the system, including Ghosts and Goblins, the Disney games, and the Mega Man series. For Strider, they wanted to do something special. Capcom was also a developer for the arcade, and they decided to design a separate arcade game simultaneously. The coin-op version would be released slightly before the NES game, and could help generate interest for the upcoming NES title. The arcade version ended up being a big success for Capcom. The gameplay is linear and action-focused, featuring a main character that feels very powerful. He does flips as he jumps through the air, his sword slashes with a pulse of energy, and he can even climb walls and scale ceilings. The graphics are colorful and feature exciting locations with large enemy sprites. It was released into arcades in early 1989 and received a high-quality Sega Genesis port in 1990. The NES version, however, was much different from its arcade counterpart. Much like Bionic Commando, Capcom created a deeper experience designed specifically for home consoles. Instead of the linear levels of the arcade, the NES version features large open-ended areas just begging to be explored. You'll find locked doors or uncrossable obstacles that can only be passed once you find the appropriate upgrade. And they even added in some light RPG elements. In addition to the deeper gameplay, Capcom also placed a greater emphasis on the story. They actually worked in conjunction with manga studio Moto Kikaku to develop a manga which would release in parts over several months in 1988. The NES game would closely follow this story. The plot of the game and manga centers on Strider Hiru, an elite futuristic cyber ninja. Strider is not his name, it's more of a title. The Striders are the strongest black ops group in the world. Their headquarters is an awesome dragon-shaped space station, and they specialize in smuggling, kidnapping, demolitions, and disruptions, amongst other things. According to the game's instruction manual, a C-grade Strider would be equivalent to a top member of another special ops group. Hiru is no C-grade Strider. He's the youngest ever to reach the rank of Super A-grade. He receives a message that his close friend Kane, another Strider, has been captured by the enemy. His mission is to find Kane and eliminate him. The manga and arcade game released in Japan, but the NES game was delayed and eventually cancelled. I'm not sure why, but Capcom decided to move forward with the North American release. It seems like this game about cyber ninjas with a manga tie-in was tailor-made for the Japanese audience, but it would never get an official release there. Possibly for different reasons, it doesn't appear that Strider saw a release in Europe either. Still, Critics gave the game many positive reviews when it debuted in 1989, and over the years, Strider is often cited on lists of the best NES games. And while it didn't make it onto IGN's list of the top 100 NES games of all time, it certainly deserves to be on there. The NES version hasn't seen any modern re-releases, but the series did get a reboot in 2014 for the PS3 and Xbox 360. The reboot leans strongly into the Metroidvania style and is a decent playthrough for fans of the genre. Modern players attempting this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. The enemies are vicious, the platforming is tough, and the triangle jump maneuver can feel impossible to execute. But what if I told you how to find every hidden item and upgrade? What if I told you about a secret shortcut to skip the entire final stage? And what if I told you how to defeat every boss? Even Matic, the leader of the Striders? Well, 
On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new episodes. Let's get started. All right, Strider. As we get started here, I want to quickly talk about leveling up. In this game, you can gain levels, which gives you more health, it teaches you new magic spells, which the game calls tricks, and it will give you more energy points to use on those tricks. However, there's no experience points or anything like that. Instead, you gain the levels by completing certain objectives, and that's why there's going to be a trick that we can do at the very beginning of the game to gain a whole bunch of levels. It turns out our friend Kane was kidnapped and they want us to kill him, but Peru is a bit unsure about that. As you choose the transfer option, there's only one place we can go. Kazakh. So that's where we're headed. Whenever you get into the game, you'll notice right away if you rapidly press the B button, you'll attack quickly, but if you get a rhythm to it, you may actually be able to attack faster than if you're rapidly mashing, so you want to get a sense of that. The enemies are easy to defeat here, and this first level, Kazakh, is one that we will actually come back to a lot of times. Well, that is unless we do the shortcut, which is what I'm going to show you first. So this is kind of a difficult trick, it involves doing a glitch, but if we can complete this trick, it's going to gain us just a ton of levels and make us very, very powerful right away. So here's what it looks like. Get close to the wall. We're gonna back into it and pause. And I'm going to break this down in slow motion so you can see it better. Here's what you do. You get close to the wall and then you hit down and right and hold it. Then you wanna quickly tap left and pause right after you press left. Before you unpause, hold down and right again and then unpause and then you want to tap left and quickly pause again. If you do it right, you'll go into the wall and whenever your whole arm is into the wall, you can unpause and hold left and then you want to let go right as you get to the top of the screen and that will bring you down here. You need to be careful down here. The enemies are kind of powerful and we are not at this point in the game, so carefully defeat this robot. We're going to fight a boss down here, and if we do it correctly, we should be able to beat this guy, and then we're going to just gain a ton of levels. This boss is called Zane. So you want to jump over that box and attack it, and you want to stay over here on the left. It always shoots downwards in the middle there. Once you kill the box, you just want to hold up and jump so that you hit the head. Then walk over to one of the sides so that it will shoot at you, and as soon as it shoots, move back into the middle and attack it again. That's a good way to avoid its shots. After a few hits, it will explode, and we will get a major level up. You'll notice right away that you immediately can do the slide move, which you couldn't do before. And we'll grab file number 5. Once we analyze file number 5, we can actually go straight to Australia now, which will take us to the end of the game, practically. There's another shortcut that we'll need to do there, but I do want to show you what we got. Now, anytime that you analyze any file, it will unlock Australia. So Australia is very easy to unlock, but normally there's a door there that will block us from moving forward. We are going to be able to skip through that door, but we can do it at any time, so I will show you that later when we actually get to Australia. But you notice right away, we have 50 health and 45 energy, and look at all the tricks we have. What an awesome way to start the game. If you don't want to do that trick, I am going to show you the normal way to finish Strider, so let's go back to Kazakh and do it the normal way. Taking the normal path through Kha'Zix won't gain us a bunch of levels or take us to that Zane machine, but it will be a whole lot easier than clipping through the floor. 
There are going to be a couple other special tricks that I'll show you in this video, but they are much, much easier to perform. And you don't have to be able to do that first trick to be able to try out the other ones. Down here, you need to carefully make your way across these platforms. If you fall down below, you'll hit some spikes, which won't instantly kill you, but could deal you a bunch of damage. You'll need to make your way to the right either way, and then jump up through that tube. There's a door there that says S3 on it, but we don't have the key for it yet. And before we move forward here, we can turn back and pick up file number one. File number one is completely optional. It just gives us a clue about the location of a certain item. We don't need it to unlock any new levels. Make your way down here and then wait at the bottom of this ledge to attack that enemy before moving forward. Whenever you move down a slope like that, you actually will be able to jump a bit farther, and you can also jump through the bottom of some platforms. So you'll need to get a bit used to the physics of slopes. You probably won't need to be able to do a slope jump at any point in the game, but you'll definitely need to be able to do it to avoid taking damage sometimes. From here it's very straightforward. We can go through doors that are marked S1. We have the key for that, so we're just going to keep making our way over to the left. Eventually, we will find a military guy at a computer terminal. And we leveled up. He told us that Kane is up there, and he gives us a disc to analyze. Or, well, we'll get the disc in a few seconds when it falls from the sky. There it is, file number two. We can go over to the left here, but we're going to hit a dead end. We need the magnet boots to be able to climb up this wall, and we just don't have them yet. So instead, we're going to make our way back to the right, and we need to leave Kazakh so we can analyze the discs that we found. At this point, it's actually okay to die. So if you were to die and continue, You'll still have everything that you found here, and you'll be returned to the Blue Dragon console, which is exactly where we need to be. But if you don't want to die, the only way to get out of here is to go all the way back to where we started the level, and then just make a jump. It will teleport us back to our Blue Dragon space station as well. So make your way across here. If you fall down, you just want to make your way over to the left, Near where we did that wall clip, there is an elevator tube there that you can use to get up on top. So here it is. Make your way up these platforms and back across to the right. That will take us to the top. Just head over to the right. I'm sorry to anyone that is sensitive to flashing patterns. The lightning in this level definitely creates a lot of flashing. So climb up this tube, you just need to jump at it and you'll go through, and head over to the left. And we'll just do a jump at the very end of the stage, and that will take us back to the Blue Dragon. And there we go. Now that we're back at the Blue Dragon, we want to choose Analyze, so we can see what's on those files. File number one is of course optional. Whenever we analyze file number one, it will unlock Australia, but we would unlock Australia just for analyzing file number two or pretty much any other file. That just gives us a clue about the attack boots which are hidden in China. They are another optional item. If we analyze file two, we will learn about a phantom train in Egypt. That's where we need to go next. So it's time to hit transfer. We're going to skip over Australia and head to the Nile Valley. It's time to transfer to Egypt. Whenever we transfer to a new area, we will be restored to full health and energy. So you can see that for leveling up there, we only gained two points of energy. We don't even need energy yet. We don't have any tricks to use. But we did gain the slide maneuver, which we will need later in Egypt. For now, just make your way across the top of the train, and you can duck down in the areas between the train cars to get an advantage against your enemies. Once you get to the end, there's going to be a mini-boss that you'll have to fight. 
you just want to get up in its face and rapidly attack it with your cypher sword. Once it's destroyed, we will move on to the pyramids. The train was just a diversion. The pyramid is the true meat of the Egypt level. As you make your way up the side, attack the enemies that you encounter from below. That way they won't be able to shoot you or hit you. As you come across the top, you can take some large leaps, but be careful of the enemies that are clinging to the sides of the pyramid. Keep heading to the right, and when you get to the bottom, you'll see a door that we can't cross right now. It's an S2 door, so we need to go down that elevator tube, and then up the next one. Make your way over to the left. If you see any of those health pellets, you will want to pick them up, unless you're already at full health. Below us, there is another S2 door, which we also can't enter. And over to the left here is an area that we'll need to go to later. But for now, we don't have the item we need, so we need to come all the way up to the top. As you move forward here, we will need to execute the dreaded triangle jump. You want to jump at the wall, and right as you hit the wall, press away from it and press the jump button again. You can rapidly mash the jump button here to try to improve your success, but make sure that you're holding away from the wall. So whichever wall you're jumping towards, you need to press the opposite direction as you start rapidly pressing the jump button. And as we come across here, we can get some running speed from that slope to get over those spears, and we'll need to use the slide to get under this ledge and grab the aqua boots. Right after you grab the aqua boots, you need to do a difficult bit of platforming, and if you mess it up, it'll be a major detour. So you want to go all the way to the edge, and then jump and hold right. So get all the way to the edge, jump and hold right, and make it across there. If you fail it and you fall down, you'll have to go all the way back around to where that second S2 door was, and make your way across to the left from there. That will take much longer, so you just want to be careful and make the jumps properly the first time. You can attack through those pillars, and we'll need to use the slide to get under those ledges. Make your way down to the bottom, and here is what the aqua boots do. They turn you into a sort of ninja Jesus, and you'll be able to walk across the water. You will no longer have the option to go underwater. So having to walk on top of the water will permanently affect the rest of Hiru's life. It's going to be a little bit annoying at the beach. On the other side of the water, we need to do more of those triangle jumps. If you're having trouble doing it, try rapidly mashing the jump button. Then you just need to concern yourself with which direction you're pressing on the control pad. You want to be pressing away from the wall that you're jumping towards. If you're already good at the triangle jumps, you don't need to worry about changing what you're already doing, but that's a good strategy to try if you're struggling with it. Also, you may want to try a turbo controller if you have access to one. When we meet this military guy, we will get key number two, which will allow us to go through those S2 doors, and we'll also level up, which will get us our first trick, which is the fire spell. If we press the select button, we'll bring up a menu, and then we can choose fire. Each time we attack with fire, though, it will cost us 5 energy, which is very steep at this point in the game when we only have a little bit. Whenever we don't have enough energy to use fire anymore, we won't be able to attack until you press select, and then choose trick at the top of the menu. That will allow you to use your sword again. Then we can just come up this way, go through that S2 door, and this elevator tube will take us all the way back to the beginning of the stage. Very convenient. We'll just have to head over to the left a bit and take a jump, and we'll be back to the Blue Dragon. Here in the Blue Dragon, we can go back to Kazakh, and this is going to be a pattern in the game. We're going to find an item in another area, and then we're going to bring it back to Kazakh, which will allow us to unlock a new part of this stage. Now that we have key number two, there is an S2 door in this level that we need to open up, and whenever we do, we'll be able to advance the story a bit farther. So make your way across the same way that we've done before. 
We're going to drop down this hole and head to the right. Watch out for that flying guy. And also watch out for the spikes below. We have a little bit more energy and health now. So whenever we get hurt, it's not as big of a deal. The screen flashes as we pass through this hallway. And you remember this area from before. We just want to drop down and climb up the exact same way that we did before. But instead of going through all of those S1 doors, we're going to take a different path that takes us up above that hallway. There will be an S2 door up there. Climb this shaft to the top. Take out these enemies on each ledge. So we'll go up this sloped area. And over on the right, you'll see an elevator tube. That's where we need to go. So we come up here, fight this robot, and we'll use a little bit of a slope jump to get across there, and that is where the S2 door is. So now that we have key number two, we can come up here, and in this area, we'll fight a mini boss. This guy wants to see our power. Well, unfortunately, he's not very powerful. Well, unfortunate for him, anyway. You just need to jump over this guy and attack him as he goes up onto the sides. You should be able to defeat him easily, then we will go through another S2 door, where we will find our friend Kane. We will also level up. You don't need to walk all the way back this time. They will automatically teleport you out. Now that Kane has been rescued, we can go back to the blue dragon and analyze file number three. File number three is actually a message from Kane himself. He's telling us something about a Zane project. It needs to be stopped. And this message will unlock a new area for us to transfer to. So that's where we're headed next. It's time to go to Japan. As soon as we enter Japan, we are immediately greeted with a message from the Vice Director. They're not going to let us pass, and we're going to be killed. Great. Now, we did gain a level whenever we rescued Kane, and it gives us access to the medical trick, which is one of the best ones. It will cost us 10 energy, but we can use it to restore some of our health, and restoring health is one of the best ways to use energy in this game. Quickly take out that samurai, and then you want to make your way over to the left here. You need to clear these two flying enemies first. Over on the left through this door, we will meet a scientist, and this guy is going to give us the ability to shoot plasma. Pretty awesome. I'll show you what that does. If you hold up, you'll be able to charge plasma into your sword, and then you just press B to release it. This is not a skill that we're going to use very often at all, but it does certainly look cool. Over here in this room, we'll meet the Vice Director, and he will give us a level up, and he'll also give us a very important item, File Number 4. File Number 4 will unlock a new level for us, China, and that's the last thing that we needed here in Japan. You'll notice there is an elevator over here on the right, and since we leveled up, we actually gained a new trick, the Jump Spell. We also gained the Spark ability, which I'll show you later, but Jump is one of the more useful skills that you can use your energy on. It will allow you to jump higher, but it has a limited number of charges. You don't actually have to go up there to exit Japan, you can just head back the same way that you came. But jump is definitely a skill we're going to be using later. Back at the blue dragon, we can analyze file number 4, and we'll learn a little bit more about the Zane machine. It seems that it can make people go insane, and it seems also that there is one in China. So that's our next destination. But before we go there, the Zane machine has been used against Kane, and so we're going to have to fight him. Luckily, he's pretty easy. Just get right up in his face and start rapidly attacking with your Cypher Sword. As soon as he moves, he'll walk right into it, 
and he will go down quickly. Kane will survive this encounter, but we also get this offhand comment about Strider Haru's sister. That actually is something that's answered in the manga in a final edition called Strider Hiru Gaiden. With Sheena taking care of Kane, it's time to pay China a visit, so select it from the transfer menu and let's go. We did get another trick whenever we leveled up the last time, so let's take a look at this spark ability. It's actually pretty decent. It also consumes 5 energy, so it's fairly energy intensive. It's not something that we're going to use very often. We'll probably want to save our energy for the medical skill or for jump when it's necessary. But it is fun to use some of these other tricks occasionally. Take out that enemy and then you want to just leap off of this ledge here. It looks dangerous, but you'll be totally fine. Whenever you get to the bottom, we're going to head to the right. You may have noticed that there were a few other elevators we could have taken before we jumped off that big ledge, and those are something that we're going to have to come back to later. Instead, just climb up these slopes, use a bit of a slope jump to get up to the next one, and attack whatever enemies you see from below. So slope jump up, climb the hill, attack this guy. You want to attack those enemies rapidly or they will start shooting at you. Just keep climbing up. Oh, that one got me. If you don't hit them fast enough, that's what they'll do. And whenever you get all the way to the top, we are going to go to the room on the far right first. So head all the way over there, and you'll see an elevator. Slide under that ledge, and we will gain the magnet boots. The magnet boots are very important. Those are what we need to climb up that flashing wall that we saw in Kazakh. If we come up into this room, we can talk to a scientist. He tells us that key number four is in Kazakh. So it's just as we expected, we need to climb that magnet boot wall. Once we have the boots, you can take this elevator here, and that will take us all the way back to the top of that ledge. And you see that one going down? That is somewhere that we'll have to go later whenever we get key number four. So we don't have key four yet. We have to go get it in Kazakh. So you want to head all the way back to the beginning of China and leap on out of here. Back at the Blue Dragon, you know what we need to do. Transfer to Kazakh. So basically, we need to go the same way that we always do through Kazakh. So we'll head across the top to the right, we'll take the elevator down, we'll drop through that small gap in the floor, and cross those platforms where we are attacked by those flying enemies. You know the drill. At the end of all of that, we'll take the elevator up, and we don't actually have key number three yet. There is a key three door there. So we are going to be returning to Kazakh another time after this. Just make your way across to the right. Oh, I fell in this time. Head all the way over and take the elevator. You see we don't have key 3, so just head across this hallway. You'll see the flash. And we're going to drop down to the bottom of this shaft, just as we always do. We're going to go the same way that we did on our first journey through Kazakh. So we want to head up to those S1 doors. They are going to be right up here on the left, so just make it to the top of here. And once you get to the top, you're going to take the door over to the left. There it is. Head all the way to the left, and that is where you're going to see that flashing orange wall. You don't need to do anything to use the magnet boots. You're simply just going to walk up against the wall and continue to hold left. So that's what we're going to do. Just keep holding left, and you will walk all the way up this wall. You don't need to ever change directions. It looks like you should be walking up now. 
and whenever you get to the ceiling, continue to hold left. Just keep doing it until you fall off. Perfect. You'll slide underneath here, slide again, and slide one more time, and then just make your way across to the right. We'll take a small elevator there, and we have acquired key number four. That's all we needed to do here in Kha'Zix, so now we'll just make our way back the way we came, and exit. The next time that we return to Kha'Zix, we will have key number three, and we will be able to enter the door right at the bottom of this elevator, and that will be the final time we will ever have to come to Kha'Zix. But for now, just make your way across these platforms. Got a little bit hung up there. And if you do fall down, of course, there is the elevator down in the lower left corner. So just take that up. Climb these platforms, and whenever you see the lightning start flashing, you'll know that you're very close to the top. So just make your way over to the right, take the elevator up, and then head back to the left, and we will be out of here. Now that we have key number four, the next thing that we need to do is return to China, and this time we're going to have access to a whole different part of China that we haven't seen before. This part is a good bit different. So we're back here at the Blue Dragon, select China, and off we go. Once you get into China, just make your way across the top. We've leveled up a lot now, so these enemies are very easy to defeat. You'll notice that leveling up actually also increases your attack strength, and not just your health and your energy. Take this tube down. Here is that S4 door that we needed the key for. This area is a bit of a gauntlet. You'll need to take out that robot before you'll be able to proceed. Duck to get underneath this spiky wall, and then you can jump straight up, and once you're above the platform that you're jumping to, that's when you want to press to the right. So duck, jump straight up, and then press right, and that will get you through smoothly. Over here on the right, we can find a hidden energy capsule, so grab that if you need it. Here we'll have to fight one of those shield enemies, so what you need to do against this guy is jump, slide underneath him, and attack him from behind. Whenever you jump, he will jump, so it's fairly easy to take that guy out if you know what to do. In here, there's more of those spiky walls. You don't have to duck whenever you're in that larger area, but you need to make sure that you jump all the way out before you start pressing to the right. So jump straight up and then press right, straight up, then right, and head down the elevator. You may remember from file number one that the attack boots are hidden here, and there they are. They are completely optional, and if you're not good at the triangle jump, you will have to go all the way back to the beginning of the stage by taking that elevator tube on the right. But if you can triangle jump out, definitely do it and make your way over to the left. Here we'll need to use jump to get up over this ledge. So jump up and make your way to the left and an elevator will pick you up. Oftentimes you won't have to move at all to avoid the enemies on the right, but if you do jump, the elevator will stop while you're jumping. Pretty strange. Slide under here, and if you attack up in the air there, you'll find a hidden energy refill. Nice. Head on down. That one always seems to get me, that moving spike there. We haven't had any enemies to use the attack boots on yet, so I'll try to demonstrate them on this spark robot. You definitely want to jump over the sparks, and normally you would just crouch and attack him with the cipher, but you can actually see what the attack boots do. They can cause damage whenever you slide through an enemy. Although it's a little bit dangerous, there's a good chance that you'll take damage doing it. In here, we'll fight a Zane machine. You want to walk all the way over to the right, wait for it to shoot, and then move back to the left to avoid its second shot. The square part moves slowly here so it's easy to take out, and then if you just hang out on the side and wait for it to fire one of those white balls at you, 
you can quickly move to the center, hold up, and jump attack it several times to finish it off. Once the Zane is defeated, we will finally have key number three. As we return to the Blue Dragon, we are informed that Kane has escaped. <sighs> Come on, Sheena. You only had one job. <sighs> well, I guess it's good news that Kane is okay. His wound hasn't healed, but it seems like if he's able to escape Sheena, then he must be doing alright. I don't think it turned out as well for him in the manga. Now that we leveled up the last time we have a new trick, it's the Warp Spell. It kind of comes at the worst possible time. For 30 energy, you can return to the Blue Dragon. But now that we have it, we are no longer going to need to enter any levels, find an item, and then walk all the way back to the beginning. At this point in the game, we are going to be finishing the levels by fighting bosses, and we will be automatically teleported out of those levels. So, thanks for the warp ability, but we really needed it sooner. We have key number three now, so you know where we need to go. All the way over to the right and up this elevator, and through the S3 door. Follow the path down, and we're going to fight that Zane machine that we fought whenever we took the shortcut way back at the beginning of the game. So this is how you actually get there. Carefully make your way across these platforms and watch out for that flying guy. Head over to the left. Just wait for that guy to jump down and then attack him. That's the best way to get through this hallway. Climb up this slope. Take out that enemy. Jump up these platforms, and we're going to slide under the ledge here. Carefully jump over those spikes. I messed up and hit them. But that's okay, we have a lot of health and energy now. And if you head over to the left, you can take an elevator down, and there's some power-ups over there. But we're doing pretty good, so we just want to make our way down the elevator on the right side and through this hallway. And here's that Zane machine, so just walk all the way to the left. Attack the square as it comes down across the bottom. And you just need to jump a couple times to take it out. It's much easier when you fight it at this point in the game. Of course, you know we get file number 5 for defeating this Zane. File number 5 is an interesting one. Analysis of file number 5 confirms what we probably already knew. The Strider organization is corrupt. The leader, Matic, has been working with the enemies on the Zane machines. That's why Kane was captured. He knew too much. At least it seems like we can trust Sheena. Whenever you return to the console, you'll have a new option when you choose transfer. Africa. That's where we're going next, so get ready for a rumble in the jungle. We leveled up whenever we defeated that Zane boss, so now we have a new trick, ground. It costs a lot of energy, and there aren't any enemies that we can actually kill on the screen right now. These crocodiles need to be jumped over, and you don't want to stand on that lava for very long. You'll take damage, so just kind of jump quickly across it. And that's what the ground ability does. It shakes everything and kills all the enemies on the screen. But it does take quite a bit of energy to do that, so it's not going to be a trick that we're going to use very often. Over here, there's another energy that we can find, so if you did want to try out the ground magic, that's a good time to do it, and then you can refill at least some of your energy. As you move across here, if you fall down below, you may need to use your jump trick to get back up onto the higher ledges. Be very careful as you cross here. If you fall down there, you'll end up all the way back at the beginning of the stage. Over here, you may need to use the jump magic if you can't get up there, but just quickly jump across because that platform will drop out from underneath you. Then you need to make your way up on these platforms. 
take out any enemies that are in your way, and take your time as you move across. You would rather stay on the top platforms whenever you can. There are obviously spikes down below that can damage you. Although those are not instant death, so if you just have to walk across and take some damage, just make sure to use your medical skill if you need it. We're going to use jump to get back up onto the higher platforms. So that's what I'm talking about. If you fall down below, just use jump and you can get back to where you were. But remember it will wear off after a few jumps. Head through this hallway. It will flash. And then you can make your way to an elevator tube over here on the right, but don't miss the energy that you can hit right above it before you go down. I'm using the medical skill here because there's a bit of tricky platforming ahead, and if we fall down below, there's some spikes down there and we might take some damage. We don't want to die if we drop down below. There is an elevator tube that will take you back up so you can try it again. But definitely make sure you have a decent amount of health before you go through there, just in case. Take out the enemies above. The ones on the ground are very easy to take out. They don't really move, so you just need to crouch to remove them. And there's going to be a moving platform here, so jump on it. And that just gives you a little taste of what's ahead. If you don't make it onto that platform, it's not that big of a deal. You won't have to backtrack very much. Slide under this ledge, and here's another spark robot. You need to jump over at least two of the sparks, and then crouch down and attack it. So jump over two sparks, try to land between the second and the third, crouch down and attack, and then take the elevator tube down and start proceeding over to the right. And you want to wait right here for the platform. You don't want to mess this up. Whenever you see the next platform, that's when you want to make your jump. So as soon as it appears on screen, jump over to the right. If you mess that jump up, you'll have to do a good bit of backtracking to get back to that point. So be very careful and precise with your jumps there. Here is another Zane. This one moves very quickly, so you want to attack it as it drops down on the right side. That's going to be the easiest place to hit it. So jump and attack it there, and then just lure one of those white circles out to the side, run in and jump attack it with your Cypher Sword. And that's it. We can finally get file number six, the last disc. We will automatically be warped back to the Blue Dragon Space Station, and whenever we analyze file number six, it's going to unlock the last location on our transfer menu. There will be one more, the final stage, but whenever we find that one, we won't be able to choose any of the other locations anymore. This message is from Faceus Clay, who seems to be a big bad guy that we're going to need to take out. And we don't know what happened to Sheena, so that's not good. Hit the transfer menu, and choose the new option. Los Angeles. It's time to get back to the good old USA. Considering how deep we are into the game, Los Angeles is a fairly easy stage. Be careful, these spike walls move very quickly here, so duck under each one and then move forward. Whenever you get to the deeper ones, remember that you need to jump straight up and only take the warp tube on the far right. The other ones are dead ends. That item is poison, so you want to avoid it, but I did collect it so you can see what it does. It will reduce your health. That motorcycle guy is easy to take out, just defeat him the same way as you did before. And then take this warp tube over to the left. Over here, we will find Sheena. She gives us some advice. She wants us to defeat Maddox and then, like, avenge her, but I don't think that she's dead, so it's kind of a weird thing to say. You're a strange girl, Sheena. Use the jump trick to get over these spikes. I was being a bit reckless and I took some damage. 
you want to make sure that you have a decent amount of health before you try to pass over those. And here's the boss, Faceus Clay. This guy is a big time joke. All you need to do is rapidly attack the glass, but if you want some style points, I like to hit it a few times and then charge up my plasma arrow and take it out with a blast of plasma. All you need to do after that is move forward and you will receive key number five. Now we can finally go to Australia and unlock that door. Australia has been on our transfer menu for almost the entire game and you could have actually gone here at any time because I'm going to show you a secret shortcut. If you didn't have key number five, it seems like you would be stuck when you reach the door at the end here, so watch what happens when I come over to the right. But don't kill that enemy, turn around and just wait. Let them shoot you, and then let them shoot you again, and then you're through the door and you don't even need the key. So that's a shortcut you can do at any time. We did gain a new ability, the Spark Ball, so I want to show you that. But I am going to cut back to our normal run here so that you can see what you would do if you have the key. But that's a really neat shortcut and it's a very easy trick to do. So if you ever feel like just moving forward to the end of the game, feel free to just take a few shots from that robot and cross through the S5 door. Whenever you beat the boss of this area, it will automatically take you to the final level and it will level you up to full power as well, so that can be a very significant shortcut. Somehow there's a tube that takes us from Australia back to Africa, which has to be transporting us at almost the speed of light. Whenever you get here, you'll drop down and take the path to the right, and then make your way across to the left here, where you will need to fight one of these samurai guys. If he tries to shoot at you, you can duck under it, but you just want to rapidly attack him with the Cypher Sword. Over here on the left side, there's a hidden energy capsule. And then just head through this hallway on the right, and you will face another Zane machine. For this one, go all the way over and try to attack it as it drops down. It will only attack over there on the far left, so as long as you stay on the right side of the screen, you'll be safe from its attack. Then you just want to wait until it shoots a white circle over on the side of the screen, and jump attack it a couple times, and that's it. You've defeated the final Zane. Now, I'm going to show you a secret trick to warp through the final level. If you die in the final level, or if you use a password to get here, this trick will not work. It will only work immediately after defeating the final Zane boss that you access from Australia. So if you want to try it, now is the time. Transfer to Red Dragon and start mashing the select button immediately. You want to access the menu right away. Then choose jump and start mashing the jump button, but as soon as you get the jump, stop jumping. It will take you up through the screen, and then you just need to come around here and jump attack the middle of the screen. That's actually a glitched out version of the final boss, and defeating it will bring you to the game's ending. You've done it. You beat Strider. But what if you wanted to play the whole final level and not do that trick? Let's take a look at that next. I believe it is possible to use a slope jump to make it up onto this ledge, but it's much easier to just use your jump trick. You'll notice now too that we have the final trick ability, the big medical, which will give us full health for 50 energy. So that's nice to have. Make your way up through that elevator tube and head across to the right. Watch out for these spikes. There are some hidden power-ups here if you hold up and jump. After the first set of spikes, the third set of spikes, and after the final spike, there's a poison, so don't get the poison. Head across here to the left. Over here, 
we may want to use the jump skill to just to make sure that we get across here. These jumps can be tricky to make on the slopes. Slide under. If you take this warp tube on the left, it takes you to a dead end, so you actually want the one on the right. Head over, and you will receive a message. Maddox says that he can't be defeated. Oh yeah, we'll see, buddy. Make your way over to the right. There's going to be an enemy there that you'll crouch to attack. And head through this door. In here we'll fight a very annoying enemy. The Tornado Guy. You can only damage the Tornado Guy when he is jumping and not in his tornado form. So you'll jump and attack him in the air and then he turns into the tornado and you have to avoid him. Then you have to do it again and again and again. It takes five shots to take this guy out. So as soon as he gets hit, he'll do the tornado again. Just wait it out. Jump over him if it gets close. And this enemy may actually be the most difficult enemy in the entire game to defeat. It's actually more difficult than the final boss even. Once he's defeated, make your way to the right, and we are going to encounter a scientist over here. He'll tell us that Matic is in the room to the right, but we can't open the door yet, so we have to destroy two computer terminals. The first one can be found by going up this elevator tube and heading over to the right. Take out this bomber, and then we're going to go down a few of these warp tubes, and whenever we get to the bottom, we need to start heading to the left, and you're going to be looking for a red flashing cipher sword. There it is. Whenever you see that, that's where you need to drop down. One of our Strider friends was nice enough to put that there for us so that we can see where to drop. Take out this samurai enemy, and you will be allowed to proceed. Over here on the right, we'll walk over some water, and we'll have to fight one of these shark mans. Crouch down and attack it rapidly. This guy is not too hard to kill, and he always drops energy, so you may want to use medical afterwards just to restore some health, and then you can pick up 10 more energy from his drop. Head up the tube. Here's another magnet wall. You're just going to hold left, but you can take your finger off it to attack the enemy here. Hold left. Continue walking up the wall. It's always going to be left, even if you take your finger off the direction to attack an enemy. So, whenever you're done fighting that enemy, you'll continue to hold left. And that's the long and the short of what you need to do here. Attack these guys. And just make your way up the wall. It's a very, very large wall. And you're just going to continue to hold left until you drop off of it. So you'll curve around and drop off, and you don't want to be holding left after you drop off or you might walk back off the left side of the platform and have to climb the wall again. So be careful about that. Over here is the first computer terminal. Just hold up and you can easily destroy it. Piece of cake. This scientist wants to warn us about you, Deserol, which is the final boss. But the final boss is not that tough in this game so we shouldn't be too concerned. If we drop down here, you can go all the way to the left and get up on the platform above, but if we just use the jump trick, we can jump right through these platforms and get up where we need to be. Take this elevator tube up, and over here there's a bunch of elevator tubes, and if you drop down, there's also a bunch of hidden items down here. Many of them are poison, but there's a health capsule, there's a number of energy capsules. Just keep searching around, you'll find them. There's an energy one. But watch out for the poison, there's a whole bunch of poisons. So avoid those, but there is the health and the energy to get. Take out that enemy and make your way across to the left. You don't want to press down there or you'll warp through and you'll have to climb back up. Head over to the left. We have to fight another one of these guys. 
So remember you jump and slide underneath the shield guy and then you're going to attack his back. He can't be damaged from the front and he will try to knife you if you just stand in front of him for a moment. Over here we'll find the second computer terminal. Just like the first one, you need to only hold up and you'll quickly destroy it. With both computer terminals destroyed, we can finally open the door to Matic. We are going to need a bit of energy to defeat him, so make sure to save at least 20 energy for the fight with Matic. If you need to use the medical skills, use the lesser ones so that you don't waste all of your energy. You definitely want to save a few points for this boss. We'll head through the door, and there will be a warp tube on the other side which will take us down below. Through this hallway, we'll receive another flash, and we will enter his red dragon control room. It looks a lot like our blue dragon one. Almost identical, you might say. Keep making your way over to the left. We are very close to the end now, but we need to take another warp tube downwards, where we have to fight yet another shield guy. You know the drill with this guy. Jump, get under him, attack him with the cypher, and then head down another warp tube. Below, there's a tornado guy that we have to fight, this time in a very small space. It's possible to jump across the ceiling and avoid this guy, but more than likely you will trigger him and you'll have to fight him. Hopefully you have enough energy to do some medical if he deals you some damage. Remember, you can only damage him when he's jumping and not in the tornado form. So that's what you need to do. Jump and hit him and then avoid the tornado. And you just have to wait it out. This right here may actually be more difficult than the final boss himself. And that's it. Once he's gone, we are in the clear. Head down the warp tube. There's a samurai down here, but he's much easier than the tornado guy. And then this is it. This is Matic. Matic can knock the cypher sword out of your hands, and if he does, you'll have to run over and grab it, which is very dangerous. The trick to beating him is to use the fire trick, get all the way to the right of the screen, shoot him with it, and then immediately switch back to your sword by choosing trick from the menu. Attack him rapidly and then get back to the right. Choose the fire trick long before he gets there. It may take a second to warm up. And once he's hit, you'll switch back to the sword, rapidly attack him, and get away before he can pick up his weapon. You don't want to take any chances. Switch back to fire, and then head to the right side of the room. Shoot him when he gets close. Switch back to the sword by choosing trick from the menu. Rapidly attack, and you should be able to take him out. He's really not that tough. Now, if you didn't have any energy, I'm not sure what to do, so make sure to save some energy before you get there. And once Matic is defeated, it's time to fight the final boss, who is much easier than Matic. This is it though. This is Yggdesirol. Whenever you get into the room, head all the way to the left, jump over those projectiles, and whenever you have a chance, you want to get into the middle, hold up, and jump to attack. You want to wait until it shoots one of those white circles at you. That will make sure that it doesn't damage you, and this thing can deal a good bit of damage, so you do want to be a little bit more cautious than you have been before. And that's it. You've done it. You've beaten Strider. Now all we can do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. In the end, we simply see Strider Haru somberly walking away. 
the organization that made him who he was, the Striders, had betrayed him. He was the youngest ever Super A-Class Strider. But what is he now? He takes a moment to look up in the sky and reflect, and knows that he must move on. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Strider and put an end to Maddox Mind Control Machinations. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more treacherous leaders to thwart. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.